Good afternoon. Welcome to European Entrepreneurship and Innovation at Stanford Engineering. This is the final ses session, session eight uh, of the 2016 speaker series here at Stanford. Uh, today is March 7, 2016. And our topic for the day is From Comments to Startups, Building Europe's Space Tech Entrepreneurship Ecosystem. So uh, our speakers today come from the European Space Agency, Frank Zaltzgeber, who is head of technology transfer in Nordvik at STEC, with who is here with three of his companies from the ESA business incubator system, uh, one from the UK, one from Netherlands, and one from Germany, two hardware, one software company for a little bit of diversity. So now we're going to move to, that's the big overview. Now we're gonna to present to you the three companies. Uh, we're gonna do one hardware, one software, one hardware. Our first hardware company is going to be presented is Xfire, presented by the CEO and founder, Harm Botter. Harm, thank you for joining us. Okay, well, Burton, uh, thank you. And everyone here, thank you for uh, taking the time to look at some European uh, startups. Um, my name is Harm Botter. I'm the founder and CEO of Xfire. And Xfire has, uh, is, uh, has taken something from space. I uh, leave you for the detail for a moment, but something from space to, uh, to uh, uh, introduce to the fire suppression industry. But let's first dis uh, discuss the fire suppression industry in itself. So we know we already spend a lot of money on those things, but still things happen. And that we have to realize that we're, we have not conquered it completely. So this was uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, you may have seen it in the news, I do, because I follow them very carefully. But it was in, uh, in Dubai, and uh, this is uh, the tallest skyscraper in the world. I think they're about 800 meters high. Can you hear me? Otherwise I have to shout, yeah? Okay, that's okay. Uh, to speak up, and there's a skyscraper, a uh, little lower, and it uh, got fire. Uh, uh, fireworks continued, by the way. Dubai doesn't like to cancel things. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, uh, if you were in the hotel, I've seen it, I've been there, uh, it was kind of a mess. Um, but uh, zooming in more, there are problems in chemical industry, of course, and you, we all know that uh, there's lots of fire suppression installations already there. And, uh, and still they don't cover everything, so uh, problems sometimes arise uh, with some devastating uh, effects. Same applies for oil rigs. I can tell you they're full of procedures, full of manuals, full of very qualified people, and sometimes things go wrong. The same applies to tankers, engine rooms of uh, ships, and so on and so on. Uh, then I go a little bit more about the data center industry. Uh, so there is a whole range. When I started my venture, I uh, have a background in IT. Uh, although I'm a lawyer, uh, I did many other things in life. Uh, and um, uh, and um, I started looking into it. And I can tell you, the industry doesn't like to, uh, to uh, publish its, uh, its problems. But I can tell you, all the well-known names have their, had their experiences. And, uh, and it, makes, it basically brings out that uh, uh, data centers may be down for uh, maybe for an hour that nobody noticed really, but, or a little bit, but they can be out for days. So it happened to Samsung, it happened to Vodafone, it happened to many other companies. And I just found on the internet by carefully searching more than 100 incidents. And if you look for them, it's likely you will not find them that easily. Um, and it also relates then to uh, information from the National Fire Protection Association, which is a U.S. organization, gathering all the information from, uh, from the firemen. That it means is if you uh, kind of anal uh, analyze the data, it says that there are about 500 incidents in the U.S. alone and then on a worldwide basis. It must be around 1,500 if you talk about serious, more serious incidents in the, uh, in the IT industry. Um, and then we, uh, we can continue that uh, I found data. There's about every three minutes there is a, an incident with cars, and we haven't talked about electrical cars yet. And uh, every one and a half minute there's a problem with a house that might be related to many things, but there can also be electricity involved. And then uh, we uh, will talk about X-Fire in a minute. So what does the industry do to conquer fire in general? It's uh, water, it's water, it's uh, uh, so sprinklers, 
uh, its foam, its aerosols. Uh, that was the, the, the new thing about 20 years ago. That's a chemical you spray into the flame and it reacts with it. Uh, and say the, the electrical uh, 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 rooms and areas, as well as mission critical uh, hardware, uh, the industry tends to protect with gas systems. And gas systems apply to many, many bottles. Is this is an example from a data center? Where is this from? Yeah, these are exactly the same data, uh, bottles from a data center, but these ones are, you see it, copyrighted marine inside. So these ones are. So how do they compare to our friend Jeremy here? They're exactly the same. Same size? They're the same size. They can be smaller, larger. Basically, they are pressurized 200 to 300 bar and they contain usually a, uh, a nitrogen or a combination of nitrogen and some other gases. In some cases, uh, they uh, store them with uh, CO2, carbon dioxide. It's a little bit cheaper, also a little bit more lethal. Uh, that's another side, but um, that's our pressurized gases. And other applications are then chemical gases. They came out of the halon period. Halon was prohibited but because it depleted the ozone layer and then they made out all kinds of uh, variations uh, of it. But by now they are becoming more increasingly unpopular as there are environmental issues uh, associ associated with that. So, bottles, bottles, bottles. The whole world is full of bottles. Once you dive into it, and uh, if you talk about mission critical areas, another picture of bottles. And, uh, and they have, are, have many colors and many sorts. And uh, you see, this is a big business. This must be a big business, uh, which is indeed true. So we talk about a size of about 80 billion in a few years to come. That's called the fire protection systems market. So it's the products associated with all the uh, equipment around it, like sensoring, like fire panels like uh, whatever you need to get it protected. And then, the f yeah, then there's a subset, which is the fire suppression market in itself. So it's more about the bottles and all the variations and the portables and the gas systems that uh, runs into a, a market of about 9 billion. And then what we see now happening, there is a development of a new market segment, and that is the protection of lithium ion batteries. It's pretty new. And, uh, but we, can, we all know that we try to make a conversion into uh, 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 yeah, electricity huh? to drive our cars, to drive our buses, to be, have off-grid systems at your home, like the uh, Tesla Powerwall uh, initiative, and there are many others, as well as airplanes that now just issued recently that you're not allowed to bring anything on board except your cell phone, I think, and your computer, but not uh, more uh, energy-intensive uh, batteries. So, uh, so this is a whole new area, and I think this will propel new growth for a new segment to, uh, to great numbers. And that would mean, if you calculate some numbers and you make some assumptions, that we have a, a, a big business ahead of us. So all big fires, as we know, all start small. Uh, all start small. So I started small, being an incubator of uh, the European Space Agency about five years ago. And what I knew was that there was something on the ESA uh, Proba 2 satellite. They made use of a cool nitrogen gas generator. And allow me five seconds because then I will show you one. So this is the one, this is just a live example. Um, exactly four of them are uh, placed on this particular satellite. It's there not for fire suppression, it's there for propulsion purposes. But the same principle allows you have to store a gas it has to sustain a voyage on the Soyuz rocket, a very heavy ride going up into orbit. It should not explode. It's, uh, that's one of the conditions. It should sit there as long as needed and deploy the gas only when needed. So when somebody on Earth pushes a button and says, now I need the gas for propulsion. So I took this idea, I got in contact with ESA, and uh, there we were off to, uh, to start a development. So this is my prototype. Are you okay if we pass this around? You pass it around, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's where we, and I can tell you a little bit about the advantages of, uh, of, uh, of a cool nitrogen gas generator. Basically, it comes down to two things. The fire suppression is 100% non-destructive. There are concepts around that produce very 
very uh, uh, so that hot gas or very fast that it produces a lot of pressure. None of these. So in this instance, the gas that comes out is room temperature. We call it ambient temperature, which is kind of special. So the generator itself cool has a mechanism to cool itself. And that's the essence of the, of the patent. There's no pressure shock. There is no, sorry, no noise shock. Other systems come out at 100 decibel. They destroy hard disks, for instance. It doesn't do that. And there's no residue. So that is the, uh, uh, and then the other thing is that we are a pressureless device. Meaning we are safe, we are easy to transport. We will get a transport classification of nine, meaning we can ship it, I think even by UPS, and which is completely different than if you want to ship this on an airplane, it's probably not allowed. No, it's not allowed. It's uh, easy installation. You saw all the, uh, the bottles, many manifolds. You don't need it with this system. Uh, you can just have these generators inside this room. There's no, no, no danger at all. You don't need pipes, etc., and therefore you have a different concept. And, and also, interestingly, there is no maintenance required. The industry currently loves, of course, the maintenance part, brings in big tickets. But here, the generator doesn't need maintenance for at least 10 years. And then that brings the total picture of uh, total cost of ownership down. Uh, depending on what the maintenance bill is. If you're offshore, the maintenance bill is higher. If it's onshore, it's lower, but it's uh, in the area of 20 to 50 percent. Okay, then um, in two minutes. In two months from now, so we're in the verge. We are about to produce this box. This is just an example of the X-Fire 1500 making inside there are two generators, each produ producing 750 oh, liters. Two of these? Two of these. A little, large. little larger. Yeah. Okay. Two of these. And arm, how, how does that compare to, you know, a bottle of this size approximately in terms of fire suppression capacity? Uh, well, we have a, uh, about 30% higher, uh, I said, return, and we are about 30% lower in weight. But it depends on on, well, the, uh, on the requirement, but say roughly on, on those those okay. uh, things. And we are work so. What is inside is a solid propellant that makes it why well, we can be more condensed. And uh, okay, this has a very thick. Uh, so this the cylinder must be a half a centimeter uh, uh, thick, so it makes adds to the weight. And uh, we work at lower pressure rates, and therefore the cylinder can be much uh, yeah can be lighter. So, again, back to this product. It will be out in two months. We, are, we have uh, uh, negotiated contracts left and right with suppliers. They were starting, uh, they started in March last year, and we are uh, uh, close to, uh, to starting production. Um, and this product will be a plug and play product. So, we just said we don't bring in the generator alone, but we associate, we bring that together with a uh, aspiration detection system, because that is what the industry likes. You want to detect the fire as soon as possible, not wait for the flame, no, even when there's an early start of a condensator, for instance, that starts to smoke. We detect it, we have three optical sensors in the product, so we take air out of the sample and then, um, so that's the principle. And then commercially, we have already orders for 750 units, uh, and we have 80 hot leads and many, many more contacts. So this is how it be stored, for instance, in the server rack, but you can also place it on top of it if you don't like it inside, if you don't like, want to waste space, that's fine. You can put it underneath and so on. So, Arm, can and, you just go back? So yeah. on top of a server rack, so that your system on top of each rack would completely replace all the bottles? If you do it by server rack, there is a tendency now, if you go, for instance, to data center, sorry, to, uh, what is it, uh, ICT containers, I call them, so you kind of uh, make them more uh, uh, separate instead of total data rooms. Uh, yeah, you can do that, yeah. And, uh, and there are also manufacturers like Rital, they bring in more and more, they do that, I think, for HP, they bring it out more and more just, uh, uh, what is it, some cabinets, maybe three next to each other, and that is where our product would fit in perfectly, because that goes back to the X Fire 2250, that uh, protects 3.6 cubic meter, and, and that is uh, about 127 cubic 
feed if I'm correctly. And uh, does it answer your question? Yes. So this is our first product to start with. And then over time, we have many more requests to make larger generators. So then we have an, an additional uh, product to enter, for instance, the windmill market, uh, the uh, airplane market. Aeros and there are requests from uh, builders of, uh, of, uh, of airplanes. And there are my many, many more, uh, more, uh, more ways to, uh, to, to use it. Um, one last word on, uh, on my team. One and a half years ago, we were uh, two people. Uh, now we are nine. We're recruiting about one per month now. Uh, we are about five nationalities from Holland, from the UK, from France, from the US and from India. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm thrilled about this business uh, and uh, I'm happy to have said my word to you and uh, I'm open for your questions. One, one more slide. Oh, I have one more slide, what I'm doing here. <laughs> That's maybe interesting to know. I'm here to, uh, to address and to find, to connect with more, even more customers and distributors and, uh, and uh, system integrators. So thank you very much for your, for, for your attention and <laughs> have your questions. So to, just to be clear, so this replaces the cold gas, high pressure, yeah. traditional system. This is a 100-year-old technology. Yeah, that's yes? about yes. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. OK. Yeah. So this is a form of disruption we don't often hear about or see in the valley. Uh, it's not computing. It's not electronics. It's not software. This is really heavy stuff. Who wants to volunteer to actually carry this out here? OK. <laughs> not many volunteers. Who wants to volunteer to carry this out here? Don't. OK, you got to bring it back, though, Mario. Um, so. The, the other important thing uh, is that because of the tremendous disruption in how they store the gas, so this is a solid state storage device inside, yeah. uh, you can also now bring fire suppression systems into residential applications, Correct. potentially yeah. into automobiles, into uh, personal boating, for example, sailboats. It brings fire suppression, which traditionally has been limited to big industrial facilities, down to the personal consumer level. That's really radical. And that's very disruptive, which is why I think this is really exciting technology and company. Uh, let's open it up for a few questions. Yes. So could you talk a little bit more about your market segments? Because a lot of data center operators, they, they don't really like reconfigure their racks a lot. Um, a lot of racks are bought you know, completely pre-configured, especially for the huge data centers. Um, so are you going for these people who are pre-configuring these racks, like your Dells and, and such, to get it top of rack like that? Or are you going after people who maybe are more in academic settings where the rocks are more open to be opened up and should switched around and getting into the academic setting? It, it, it might be both. Uh, so there are new centers are being built and nowadays they become more and more modular, as you know. So I think Microsoft started with that and I see uh, also Google doing that. So they containerize basically, so they, build, they basically build a roof and containerize and they bring the stuff in. So it's, uh, I think Schneider Electric is uh, making those stuff and, 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 uh, and others. And there's retrofit. So uh, we had questions from uh, data centers from f a certain accounting firm, one of the four, and they want to rethink their concept in, uh, in more containerization of their, uh, of their, uh, of their setup. And, then, um, and eventually, if we can bring up uh, containers like this size, then, then the rate of it is very easy because then still you can use their piping, so you can use their infrastructure. But eventually you don't need it, so for the new setups, it will be a new, uh, yeah, it will be a new design, how uh, to be, make that more efficient. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, you have a name collaboration with China. Sorry, with China? Yeah. Yes. Uh, not yet. I uh, I had contact with. Uh, with a large Chinese company that wants to take us, uh, we take this product uh, inside their market. And uh, they were talking about uh, 100 to 200,000 uh, units on order. I said, well, let's start with 10,000, but that's uh, <laughs> because we're not, I mean, that's uh, apart from the joke. I mean, we now really have to scale. So we have, uh, we spent for the last year uh, talks with uh, the manufacturer of the generator because that's the part we outsource and, uh, and uh, how to get up to speed, basically, to real big numbers. And but, uh, you had a question? Yes. So if you have contacts there, please contact me afterwards. Yes. <laughs> Good. Is there any way to make 
Okay. Yes. Yeah. Good. I was wondering, um, as you started talking with the ESAT, you know, you said the transfer center and forward. How did you fund your development? Uh, my own pocket, mostly. No, and then it's not totally true. I took on smart money. So, and the funny thing is, if you ask money, you don't some, well, you usually get advice, and if you ask advice, you sometimes get money. That's my, uh, uh, my saying, and it really happened. I mean, I mean, it's honestly true. So I talked around, talked left and right with people I knew, and then people said suddenly, they called me or they, uh, uh, yeah, whatever, emailed me, hey, uh, I had a go I, thought, uh, I uh, did some thinking, and I think I should be an uh, investor in your company. So, want me, uh, so if you are uh, inclined to do that, tell me. And so that's basically how I found my money. Uh, so that helps. Uh, in the beginning, I could have taken it all, but I don't think it's wise to do. So eventually, you just have to bring in more people. It's more, more brain power, etc. There are so many things to, to think of. How do you deal with IP? How do you do about distribution? How do you do about sourcing your product? And so on, and so on, and so on. How do you build up a team? Uh, how do you conquer the US market? How do you conquer Asia, for instance? And, and I can continue for many, many, many more questions. You cannot do it alone, so you have to bring in money and wisdom and brain power. Uh, sorry, we, is this a quickie? Okay. Harm, thank you very much. Thank you so much.